stimulates a lot of questions. How many of you eat seafood? Yeah? How many of you don't eat seafood? Are you vegan? No. no. All right. So uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about the state of fisheries in Oregon today. We uh, started a company three years ago uh, right here in Cascade Head. We came up with the idea and we saw it fish people. And uh, our slogan is Fear No Fish. We find a lot of people have a very uneasy relationship with seafood, so Fear No Fish. We, uh, we use pure fish, simple ingredients, wild caught, not farmed, sustainably harvested, which we'll talk about. Local Northwest waters, we don't get things from other countries. We don't import from China. Traceable to the fishermen, which is one of the things we pioneered, is you can eat uh, from these, maybe I can grab a pouch from you. We're going to look at this a little bit later, but if you're interested, we can log on. And there's a code on every one of these pouches. There's, this is a seafood meal. There's a code in every pouch that you can meet the captain, the boat, where it was caught, and everything that's in here, whether it's the cream or the onions, you can trace it back to the source. A lot of people don't trust their food anymore. Uh, you can trust it if you know where it comes from. So lastly, uh, easy prep and rest of quality results. So, my uh, so who are we? Um, founded in 2012, that's me uh, setting my front yard. That's my partner who's a rock climber and a river guide. And uh, we're now, we have almost 40 employees now. And we're distributed coast to coast. We've got offices in Portland. Uh, Toledo is where we do a lot of our tuna, so we're local. Um, we went into stores, uh, New Seasons. You guys shopped at New Seasons before in Portland? Yeah. yeah. Great grocery store. Uh, first place we ever had our uh, had our products. Um, our market region is the United States. We're seeing a signing C now, and um, yeah, that's a that's a start. So, how many of you know what a B Corp is? B Corp. So, you may have heard of S Corp or Inc. or LLC. These are these are tax statuses recognized by the U.S. government. We're a B Corp. What does that mean? It means that we consider three things. Most businesses consider what? What is their main drive? Income. Profit, right? So we're the same, but we consider three things, and they're here. We consider people, planet, and profits in every decision we make. That is, we believe, the future of business. Last, secondly, we are, want to change our relationship with the sea. There are, here's a fact, that's us. There are, 70% of the major fish in the world are gone. 70% of the fish that were swimming around when your grandmother and grandfather were born are gone. Where do you think they went? Exactly. You are, sitting here, you are the apex predator. You are the T-Rex of today. Right? There's, there's nothing more powerful or more scary than a human being, especially when they're hungry. Uh, keeping 100% of our seafood dollars in U.S. communities. Do you realize that we live in a poverty zone? There's another fact. This is a poverty zone. The coastal, uh, other than say San Francisco, uh, the coastlines of California, Washington, and Oregon are almost awash in red. They are, they are poverty zones. Despite the fact that we have incredible natural resources. We'll get to that later. So this is where we're, uh, we're located. Uh, you have Quinta Bay, we have a dock here, we have a processing facility, and then our headquarters are in Portland, as I said before. So when we say sustainable, sustainable is a lazy word, but it does, uh, it is interesting that we, we harvest 130 species come across the dock in Newport, in that story. 130. Right, but you guys could probably name 10, maybe 15. Of those, of those 130, these are the species that are sustainably harvested for one reason or another. Some of them are weird reasons. Tuna, it's because they don't come in very close. Diesel keeps going up in cost, so we don't hammer them. Uh, there's certain uh, other species like uh, cod. Um, there's, there's a variety of them that are sustainable. These are the only uh, fish that we put in our products. We are trying to funnel you as the apex predator towards these 10 and away from the other 120 so they can recover. So this is an interesting one. And there's a fact. The pouch you're going to eat has albacore tuna in it. We caught it with hook and line off the Oregon coast on a boat called the Sunset Charge. Captain Scotty Castinger caught it. If we were to take that fish, gut it, chop its head off, and send it to China in a freezer uh, pack, which is what 
90% of the tuna where they go is offshore. We only need 10% here. If we keep it here, instead of shipping it to China, and instead of a log, we make furniture, right? We make a meal out of it. We add value to it. We put coconut milk, fear lime, all kinds of yummy stuff that you're about to taste. It is worth five times more staying here than it did going to China. That just seems like stupid to send it to China, right? Why are we still sending 90%? We're going to explore that. If we did that, if, there were, if fish people bought all the fish and made meals out of it, shipped it all over the United States, instead of $700 million being in, the, in Oregon, there'd be $1.1 billion in Oregon from those same fish. So what problem are we solving? What, you know, so we've got these fish that come in on the dock. What, what problem are we solving? It seems weird, but this uneasy relationship that I was talking about is very sort of prosaic. It sticks up my house. I hear that a lot from people that don't eat seafood much. It has bones and skins, and that's the cleanup. There's a risk of overcooking it. I don't know how to prepare it. It's expensive. On the other hand, it's got omega-3s, which makes me smarter. It's lean and green protein. So there's this sort of love-hate that goes on with seafood. We're solving that with our product. This one is really interesting. We just got back from going crisscrossing the United States. We went to New Jersey, Chicago, and Seattle and asked people, what do you think about seafood? What was interesting was that it was this. They, were fear, they had fear of processed mystery fish and ingredients. 45% of fish sold in America today are not the fish they say they are. 45% are, are, are falsely labeled. Uh, Obama started a commission on seafood fraud. So that's one. The other is, you probably heard, how many of you heard of the GMO salmon? Yeah? Some of you? It's the first being that's ever been approved for consumption that was genetically modified. It grows 10 times faster than a normal salmon. Does that worry you? It worries me. It's kind of weird. Um, so antibiotics, chemicals, Mistrust of foreign food imports. Here's the greatest fact of all. Here's two together. I call this bad math. 90% of the fish we catch in the United States goes somewhere else. Okay, that's bad, but it's getting worse. 90% of the seafood you eat comes from another country. Does that seem crazy? Yeah, seems that way to me. Hard to clean, difficult to prepare, easy to screw up, and it's the most expensive protein there is. Meanwhile, the seafood industry is doing some really wild stuff. We have giant industrial processors extracting volumes. We have questionable uh, quality and safety. We've talked about this. Sustainability, the, the, the task force on fraud. So we are one of the only seafood companies in America. There are lots of them. I mean, you probably have seen some of them. Trident, Ocean Beauty, um, Pacific, right here in Oregon. None of them is focused on the consumer. They are focused on, or very few of them are, and they're focused on moving fish. We are focused on the consumer by being honest. We tell you where everything comes from. We promise you it will always be sustainable. We will always harvest it in America. It will be pure and wild, and it will be easy to prepare. That's our mantra. So when we say transparency, we literally mean that. So we show you a picture of what you're eating rather than you know having to read that fine type. So you're actually seeing what went into the pouch. As I said before, punch in a code. This is what comes up on our website. 
people trust things they see. So this is what we're going to taste. So you could, um, we should start up wherever our chef is. There you are. Why don't we go ahead and fire up these? Um, I think it's set. If we can hit it for two minutes, these are ready to come over and start serving. One of one of us could be serving right now, and then the other could be firing up. Okay. What you go ahead um, and bring no, over? I, those I did not realize eighth graders were going to join us. So I've already checked with all of my Oregon fish students regarding allergies. I have, I have no allergy reports back from downstairs in the office. But if you have any known allergies, like to fish or any specific ingredients, you need to let us know um, because we don't want to get you guys sick or in trouble. Okay. Um, and so you're not, you don't have to try everything. We have, um, he has brought a variety of um, samples. We. So the food we're, gonna, we're about to eat. Um, I hope so. Yeah. There's a. Yeah, I, trust I, I do all the product development and the cooking here, uh, or the development of this with my wife and a chef council we have in Portland. Uh, so there's bisques and chowders. So, razor clams, anybody dug razor clams in here? Yeah. Fun, the most fun on wheel. I love it. Razor clam and bacon. We have coconut red curry seafood bisque. We have seafood chili, Polanco. Wild crab bisque and alder wild salmon chowder. So those are four. The beauty of this is, this is kind of a weird science, but we, we put everything in raw in these pouches and seal them, and then we pressure cook them for an hour. There are, these te there's this technology, this started in the 1940s. They still have pouches they can open up from the 1940s and have the same texture and flavor and color as when they were retorted. That's bad. There's no preservatives. It's like canning. How many of you can? You guys can? It's the exact same thing. This is what we're doing. We're just doing it in pouches. All right. Uh, these are two new ones I just developed. Smoked oyster and bourbon chowder. Uh, everyone's going to have to show their ID to eat that one. Uh, no, there's no bourbon, actually. It burns up all the alcohol. Wild seafood bouillabaisse, which is uh, French-inspired. And then these are our uh, these are our entrees right here. Albacore tuna, cotton Oregon coast, yellow coconut curry. This is uh, a Chardonnay that we actually grow the grapes here in Portland. Uh, and then this is also a Thai coconut lemongrass country, which is my personal favorite. This is like going to Bangkok. This is like going to Europe. This is like going to, uh, to Madras. So, 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 right there. so right now we're going to be handing out the albacore tuna with yellow coconut curry entree. Oh, no, that's not the right one. No, the Thai lemongrass. We're going to hand out. Look at this guy right here. So, if you would like this one, um, this is Arthur passing it out. Please keep your sample cup. We wouldn't have enough sample cups to keep going through. So keep your sample cup, which means you might get a little bit of cross contamination with other flavors, but that's okay. You're going to keep your sample cup and you're going to keep your spoon, okay? Um, here, can you get us a little paper towels over there, please? All right, so, um, and again, yeah, just make sure you get a spoon for each. I'm wondering why we do this. We can't open it up for questions and all wrap up at the end. That is all that way. Do you want me to do it? Okay. 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 Okay.
Southeast Alaska. Um, there's fennel in it from Supper Farms. Supper's in Turlock, California. They make unbelievable veggies. And then the cream is from Anderson Dairy, which is right across the, uh, the Columbia from Portland, Oregon. So everything is within a 250 mile range that went into this product. The salmon being outside that because it came from, uh, from Alaska. But here's everything else. Potatoes, onions, corn, red bell pepper, sherry, anchovy sauce, celery, thyme, canola oil, garlic, lemon juice, spices, alder smoke. Each one of these, each one of these, look at this. this I went to a lot of trouble with getting this alder smoke, so I want you to appreciate it. This is a guy who we met up in, uh, in, in Port Townsend who smokes chili peppers but water drips off his chili peppers into a big bin, and he, he used to throw it out. But he tasted it one day, and it was really delicious, so he started selling it to us. And what it is is it's super concentrated smoky, and you'll smell this when you, uh, when you eat some of the smoked salmon. I can taste it. Yeah, and, it, and half of it is from the smoke of the fish itself, and half of it is from this one guy who grows his peppers, smokes them, he calls it he was marketing this stuff. He's not much of a marketing guy. He used to call it uh, pepper sweat. And everyone was like, no thanks. <laughs> we named it Alder Smoke Essence, and away we went. So I'd like to open it up, uh, if it's okay with you, Avery, yeah. to, to go ahead and ask uh, any questions you guys might have about our company, about fisheries in general in the, in the West Coast or in America. Anything come to mind while you were watching the, the, the deck? So all poor tuna are farmed are fish like yellowfin and bluefin tuna in the farm because they swim a lot more. You know, they are trying very well. It depends on what you mean by farms because right now one of the things that's decimated bluefin is they go out and they actually catch them when they're very young in pens and keep them in those pens and fatten them and grow them to large fish. The problem with it is they, they with that is they took them out of 
uh, circulation before they came to sexual maturity, so they never made it, and they never created new new fish. So that's a form of farming. There is a, a crazy guy in California who's actually come up with the first farmed bluefin tuna. And it would help because it would help pull the pressure off of what is close to being an extinct species. Albacore, I don't think they'll ever try just because they're so plentiful. There's, there's literally billions of them. So they're a, they're a sustainable resource. My favorite fish. So how did you get the idea to make this company? So, uh, how many of you are 16? Yeah? Almost 16? So, when I was 16, I was a commercial fishing captain uh, out of the Columbia River Bar. And I'd been fishing since I was 13, uh, commercial fishing. And so, I, went, I left that business when I was 16 years old, and I came back when I was 55 years old, back to live at Cascade Head. And uh, a lot of this beautiful, I mean, the seafood industry is really cool. It's a, it's a wonderful industry. And it's really on its lips. It's not healthy. It needs change. And it needs consumers to change. And it needs the industry to change. So I went back into it. I, I was in the uh, fashion industry for almost 30 years. And when I came back here, I decided to get back into fisheries to see if I could make a difference with my knowledge about business. And uh, a lot of the guys, my buddies who were like your age, right, we were all started fishing, are now the, like, I call them the silverbacks. They're the old, you know, uh, more successful fishermen. And so uh, I buy a lot of fish from them now. Um, I wanted to use consumers, like you guys and your parents and your brothers and sisters, to make change in fisheries because we have been, I mean, can you imagine a creature coming from the sea and wiping out all but 30% of us on, on, on land? What do you think we think of that creature? I wouldn't like it. No, I wouldn't like it either. So anyway, a long answer to your question, but that's why I jumped back in. Any other questions? Jumping guys, so right now let's kind of change how we're going to serve the food, because otherwise it's going to take forever. If you would like this sample that is being passed down, just scoop yourself just a small spoonful so everyone can try it. So we're going to have different um, bags going down the row. You guys can look at what it is. If you'd like it, put it into your sample cup and try it. If not, then just keep on passing it. Okay. And just make sure you use the big spoon. Yeah. All right, so what other questions do you guys have for Duncan? Questions. There's got to be at least one more question. Okay. Hey, guys, what questions did you write down on your work I would like you to ask Duncan some of those questions. Average. Uh, it's growing like that, so there is no average per year. Um, we have fed 1.1 million people so far. Yeah, it's a lot of meals. So you guys are in that number. Now. Yeah. So 1.1 million. Yeah. What other questions did you guys write down? Which one was Did you guys write down questions? I did. What did you write down? Already asked yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions you wrote down? I don't know, but I probably didn't say it. Oh, now we're curious. this. How much income do you make? How much income do I make? Not you, but like, how much income do you make? We're losing money. Oh, you're losing money. We're losing money. So, almost every food company that you, if you walk by a, a, a brand on a shelf, the first four or five years, they lost money. I can guarantee you they lost money. It's, it's very expensive to be to put equipment in, to have salesmen, to keep the lights on. We have we have very few people. You know, I mean, you look at Kraft; they've got literally hundreds of thousands of people work for them. We've got you know twenty that work at our headquarters. You would not believe the amount of money we spend to keep they and their families going, right? Opening our factory in Toledo. So ask me again in two years, and I'll tell you that we're actually making a problem. Okay. I'll just go and buy a bunch of Yeah, I'll buy up all the Can you find me in two years? Yes, he I'll be here. <laughs> Other questions? Go in the back. So, the fish that you hey guys, wait, wait. Let's listen up. Ladies in the third row, thank you. The fish that you catch is actually fully sustainable, like 100%. 
Yeah, if you ask certification bodies, yeah. So the tuna you guys are eating is certified by Marine Stewardship Council. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but they have inspectors, they have protocols. So just want to make sure you're. Can you just clarify what's sustainable for them? I know it's complicated, but it's it's a loaded word. So I, I don't believe in the word actually myself. I'd rather just use transparency and let you figure it out yourself. But sustainable means that that fish stock will be around for your children and your children's children in the same way that you enjoyed it. You could be sitting here in this classroom 50 years from now and it would still be abundant and sustainable at the same levels it exists today. Right? If we had done this 100 years ago, you would not recognize the rivers right here in this in this county. You would not recognize this ocean. It would be that radically different. There are six percent of salmon stocks left. Six percent, three whites. Before we came, there are six percent of those stocks left. That's not sustainable. The way they harvested was not sustainable or impacted habitat or whatever else. Albuquerque tuna, Marine Stewardship Council certified. They take inventories of the populations. They make sure they're not dropping. We eliminated nets, this is a good example. We eliminated nets, we catch them one at a time with a hook and line. There's various ways we can adjust to become sustainable. That's when I would say sustainable is a nice deep word. It means six billion different things to six billion different people. You guys are full of questions, I like you too. Yeah. See that, uh, you know, like on a tournament, were those sustainable or those uh, fish that you wouldn't catch? So, rockfish, which is probably what you're talking about, most of them should not be fished. There are some that have just been certified by MSC, but they're not the ones that the, the party boats usually go after. Rockfish are weird because they grow to be 100 years old. You might catch a 100 year old, right? And if it's a female, she produces really big eggs that really survive well, as opposed to little fish. A rockfish stays in the same place, and so it's like ripping somebody out of their house, as opposed to a salmon who's all over the place or a halibut, they move around. So I would refrain from catching one. Yeah, in general. So do you have like do you have any ideas to like expand this further beyond this division? You know, like doing no, no. One thing I would like to expand is I would like every everybody that grows a cow or kills a pig uh, that they can tell you the story of that pig and that cow. Yeah, that I would like to explore. For the we just won the highest award in food as a company for our traceability, and we think like it should be just normal. Like everybody should be doing it. You should be able to know where your food comes from. But uh, one thing we will do is we're going to move we're going to move fish on land. Uh, sooner or later, we will be involved in aquaculture, moving salmon on shore, on land, to grow them. But uh, we haven't figured out the feed and the waste yet. So that will be coming. Can you go over the restaurants here on the Oregon coast? Where do they get their seafood from? And how do you know whether it's local or it's coming from somewhere else? So have, have, have any of you eaten at Local Ocean down in Newport? Yeah? What have you? Check it out. If you ever get a chance to eat there, it's not that expensive and it's fabulous food. They buy direct from the boats. They buy from the dock, right? I was at a recent event. This is just a, a, to answer your question. I was at an event that was to, to benefit uh, estuaries here on, on the Oregon coast. And it was all sustained, built as all sustainable. The chef walked by and said, did you guys bring us this Dungeness crab? And I said, no, but it says made in China on the box. It had been caught in Newport, frozen in Clackamas, shipped to Xinjiang, China, picked by Chinese people, packed back up in the boat, brought back over, shipped to a DC, and then sent to Fred Meyer, where it was bought in Newport. That crab was caught in Newport. It's it's in <laughs> so most of the seafood, 90% of the seafood, that, you, that is served in restaurants in America, including Lincoln City, has gone through something like that. It's from uh, Mexico, uh, Taiwan, China, most of it's from China, Japan, um, and a percentage of it is local. But something that a lot of it has been caught here, shipped abroad, packaged it, and then 
took back here. And so why is that? Labor. Labor. We, we typically, one, we're not as skilled in many ways. Uh, Americans don't make things as beautifully as the Chinese do. They're really good with their hands. Two, it's the, the, the wages are lower. They'll do it for $2, where it costs us 10 here. So it pays for the diesel to go over and back. That's changing. China's middle class is closing in on our middle class. We're only two percentage points behind that by income right now. So you'll see that changing a lot. One of the things we're doing as a company is we're doing what's called reshoring, Avery. We're bringing a lot of business back into America from mm -hmm. offshore. And that's, you'll, you'll see a lot more of that. We need to do that by the billions of dollars. Example, I'll just give you one of your quick examples. In Toledo, where we have our factory, anybody know what a living wage job means? Living wage? It means generally someone who wants to live a normal life doesn't have to work two jobs, right? Or isn't poverty stricken or, or on uh, 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 food stamps. So no one in our facility had ever had a living wage job in Toledo. Because, remember that 5x slide we talked about? Improve the tuna by five times in these meals? We pay everyone in our facility full insurance and a living wage job. I had a man say to me the other day, I said, I'm sorry you're having to stay late tonight. He said, I would walk off a cliff. Because I've never had a job that paid me just a living wage for what I'm doing. So I've had to go to Alaska every year and live my family. That's the difference of eating a meal like this. So one of the things you can do is, you guys are the apex predators. You can you can ask the question of your parents or uh, of yourselves when you're out uh, uh, shopping yourself. Ask if it came from America. Ask, ask in a restaurant next time you eat out. Did this fit? Where did this fish come from? Demand that it come from here. Support the people that are in the community. So you can be your neighbor, right? That's something you guys can do. There's other things. What? A, in fact, I'm going to ask that question. What do you, knowing what you know now, you knew more, you know more now about this than you did when you walk in. What can you do? You're the apex predator. You're in control of the situation. It's not happening to you. You're making decisions with your dollars, right? You or your family. What can you do? What are some ideas? It's popcorn. Keep the money in Oregon. Is that what you're saying? Keep it local? I'm saying all the stuff we just learned. 90% of the fish is going somewhere else. They're not, they're not being sustainably harvested. Um, there's a lot of issues here that I just surfaced. What, what's a solution to one of them that you can think of? You have your hand. Buying at Barnacle Bill is not Safeway. Yes. Yes. I love it. I shop there quite a bit. So purchasing local fish in restaurants, and uh, uh, even if it's slightly more expensive, which actually it doesn't necessarily have to be, which is one of the myths. What else? Solutions. Remember, you guys are in charge. It's up to you guys. What other solutions? What other ideas do you have to turn this? So, so, for keeping the money in Oregon or for sustainable harvest, what specifically do you want them to know? Okay, so those two. Yeah. Pick either one. How do we, how do we, uh, what are your ideas for um, making sure that uh, your grandchildren will eat the same fish you're eating? What can you get to? That you won't be the last generation to eat tuna in your classroom? Huh? Don't overfish. That's one. Um, buy from fish people. <laughs> buy from fish people. Nice. Thank you. I love that answer. Yeah, but, or, or people like us, right, that are focused on sustainable species. Yeah, exactly. Other ideas? Do you guys sell whole fish instead of this in case we want to make our own recipe? You know, we do. We sell fillets uh, in, that are uh, individually backpacked and frozen. In a partnership with a very unlikely company. Hey guys, don't 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 pick up yet. Just stay where you are. Just leave your cover there. Okay. 
Um, so at, at in Newport, at the Walmart, we sell some of the most beautiful tuna and salmon and rockfish you'll ever buy in your life. And it's a partnership that we have with our CEO, where we're doing 100% sustainable, traceable fish. It actually has the picture of the captain of the boat on the, on the, on the thing. So ask for fish to go to Walmart. Sure. So I don't know if we can pull back up that deck or if our time's up. So do you want to uh, sure. you know? Any other thoughts before we round up? What is commonly sold as sustainable? Oh, that isn't sustainable. Oh my gosh. Most salmon. Uh, a lot of rockfish. Uh, tilapia. Um, swordfish. Um, uh, Chilean toothfish, which is uh, sea, the Chilean sea bass. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know that much about it because I don't ever deal with it. Um, it's a classic one here that you find here that's a, a bad player. The bigger the fish, the more you should avoid it. Because it takes a lot of energy to make a big fish. The other thing is, how many of you know what bioaccumulation is? So when you eat a lot of something, and fish eat a lot of other fish, there's a lot of mercury in little fish. So if you're a swordfish or a big tuna, you, you, it takes a lot for you to grow bigger. You, you, what happens is heavy metals accumulate in your body and don't leave your body. So um, there's two kinds of sustainability. One them, one for you. You wouldn't be sustainable if you ate a lot of swordfish. Uh, there's a famous uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s uh, uh, son ate fish out of uh, a river in New York. He went and got tested, and they called him a, uh, a Superfund site. His body was a Superfund site. He says, if you were a piece of ground, we would be remediating you right now. You have so many toxic chemicals in your body. And it was from the fish that he'd eaten out of the Hudson River. So it pays to, to pay attention when it comes to, to the health of fish. But, so I go to Tyler Ray's like once a week, and I get yes. fish there all the time. Yes. And last time I went there, and they had sockeye salmon on the menu, right? Yes. And I asked him where it was from. I did, and the waiter had no idea where it was from. He had to go find out. I can tell you. Where. And he said it was, you know, it's from Alaska. But still, how do you know if that's sustainable, right? So you were saying most salmon is not sustainable, even if it's local or from Alaska. Couldn't it not be sustainable as well? Yeah. So in the lower 48, salmon stocks are hammered in the lower 48. So in general, if you're eating fish from here, it's 90% chance it's not sustainably harvested. We avoid it harvesting here. In the case of sockeye, it almost all comes from Bristol Bay, right? Sockeye is a weird fish. It has to have a lake to spawn in. So there's lots of lakes adjacent to that bay. Um, and it is certified as sustainable, RFM. So sockeye is a pretty good species. If you want to, and, and chum, or dog salmon, it's actually a beautiful salmon, it's a terrible name, but Chum salmon and sockeye salmon are almost always uh, sustainably harvested. Stay away from Chinook and Silvers in general, unless you caught it yourself. Yeah. Other good fish, keep in mind what you saw up here. Um, crab here, not just crab, great to eat. Oysters, harvested uh, sustainably. The tuna, the cod, uh, certain members of uh, the flounder family. Um, so there are fish that are good to eat and that, you know, they're sustainable. It's nice that they're good to eat. They're good, too. So if the salmon's caught off the boat in Newport, it still might not be sustainable. In general, it's tough. It's tough. It's just tough to figure that out. It is tough. Um, I love local salmon. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise one more thing just to completely fill your brains. There's a difference between a native fish, i.e. it raised itself out of gravel in a millions of year old, salmon are 60 million years old. 60 million years old as a species. There are hatchery fish. Those are not natural fish, they're ours. We raised them, we're the mom and dad, right? There's a difference between those two fish. The reason we don't harvest a lot of salmon down here is because we mix them up. Natural fish should never be caught, in my mind. You should always turn them back. And they have a little adipose fin right here. If you guys fish, and you find one that has an adipose fence, a little fin that gets removed by the hatchery, let it go. Because otherwise, that, they contain the future of the fish. 
Otherwise, if, if, if all we have is hatchery fish, we, they'd be gone in between five and seven years, all the stocks would crash. So we don't need those native fish to be out there. So that's one thing you can ask uh, anytime you go to a grocery store or a restaurant too is, is this a hatchery or a native fish? Hatchery, thumbs up. Yeah. So back to the CBS question I asked you, or did you say stay away from them? Was that for commercial fishing or for your catch them yourself? So commercial fishing, what they do is they drag midwater trawl nets. So they are now sustainably harvested. I'm talking about uh, close in shore with party boats, the, you know, and they'll drop down into rocky reef areas. That's not a good place to fish. And they've largely been removed. All the big fish have been removed. So it'd be better if you didn't fish those. Commercially, it's a really good question. Commercially, they go out farther, they catch younger fish, and they're net trawling them before they settle into their homes. Better, better way to harvest. We, we sell those, by the way. I know there's a lot of information, you guys. I'm sort of a geek on this stuff. Other questions? Patience. Right mm -hmm. So, um, uh, I was just asked what we learned on our American tour. I was kind of blown away that people were so worried about seafood. I always thought of seafood as, whenever I think about seafood, uh, it is, when you're born, when you're a baby, an infant, 75% of your brain was omega-3s. They're these fatty acids that your brain needs to burn like gas. Like right now, while you're listening to me, in order to be able to process the words that I'm speaking, you have to have long-chain fatty acids in your brain fueling your brain. Where do those come from? They come from certain plants on land, but the densest, most powerful form of them that you can really uh, uh, digest is from the sea. Only comes from the sea. It's a gift from the sea. And it also happens to create incredible heart health. So your heart and your brain are kind of important. So what we learned is that people loved that stuff and they knew about it, but they were freaked out that big business profits were healthy and their bodies were getting sick. And then it was from the food they were eating. That's what we said. And um, so the one thing they said over and over again is if I know where the food's coming from and I trust a company, I, I will support that company and I'll eat that food. If I don't, increasingly I'm buying locally as much as I can or I'm eating the people that are growing my food. There's a huge move in America today towards moving away from big food companies. Because they, the perception is they don't care about my health. They don't care if I get cancer or not. They just want profits. Uh, then the uh, medical industry really feeds off of you if you got cancer. Right, exactly. It's a vicious, it's a vicious loop. So I just wanted to go back to this one last time. You eat three meals a day. You are the apex predator. Don't forget the T-Rex. Right? You and your families hold the future of the oceans and coastal communities in your hands. Your food dollars are like votes. Every time you write a check, or you've got cash, it's a vote for a different future. So knowing what you know now, what are three things you can do starting today that would have an impact on the oceans and the communities that depend on them? And are you willing? So I just leave that with you to digest from what you've heard today. Be thinking about the responsibility that comes from being the lion of the T-Rex. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you.